Hello, boys. Hello, girls. Hello, MBs. And welcome Hello. back to the judgiest couch on the internet. My name's Josh. My name's Rick. And my name's Christian. And we are the, the Judges. Judges. Back and later than ever. Oh, it's a late uh, one. It's not our latest. I, uh, for a double episode, it's pretty late. That's no, we've started recording at like nine o'clock before. For a double episode? Oh my god, you guys are being such babies right now. I'm not being Just a, baby. a reminder that you can right after this episode you can go over to patreon.com slash judges pod and watch the bonus episode for this week. Huzzah. Bro, I almost my, brought my bottle of wine. My boy had the box wine ready to go. I'm fed up with you folks. I had to listen to two hours, if you include the hour on patreon.com slash judges pod. Of you guys high as freaking kites, allegedly. On Christian. CBD. Uh-huh. And, and now I'm drinking some wine. Okay. Is that fair? That's, That's fair. fair. That's I honestly, it's I feel like fair. you feel like I'm ripping your bit. No. And I, I want the most... listeners to know that it was my bit that you ripped. Mm, I don't know. That's really arguable. No, Josh definitely had a box wine before I ever had a box wine. Okay. I invented drinking from a box of wine. The bag of wine, I would say, is my bit. That's fair. That's fair. It's, do you have a cup? Or are you just gonna? No, I'm drinking from the box. That it's, stresses me out. Is it, on our funnier, brand new... is it funnier to do it in the box or in the bag? And now we'll know. <laughs> now we because will we'll, know. We'll have Christian drinking from the bag. Well, listen, is Franzia our sponsor this week? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, just drinking from that side. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> they say it on both sides. It's not Franzia, but it is truly. Editor will edit it out. Yeah. But you know what editor doesn't have to edit out? What's that? Is somebody sending in a big old box of mail. Mail. Over at P.O. Box 58, Ottawa, Illinois, 61350. And this is a fun one, folks. Can oh, I so you already it? opened it? I did already. Can I open it? That's fucking rude. Yeah. Letter for Richard. I, okay. And it's very good that I opened it because it the letter was not on top. And it does say open first. Don't even freaking dig in there, brother. <laughs> It says open first on the letter. <laughs> it doesn't say uncover first. Hi, judges. Hello. Yes, Hello. you can say my name. My name is Jamie. She, her. And I've been listening to the pod since Erica was on last year's Ladies and Tangents Mother's Day episode. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. You've gotten me through some tough times, and I put on old episodes when I'm cleaning, going for a walk, or just need a good laugh. We I've always wanted to send you something, but I was never sure what to send. It wasn't until episode 163 where you told the story of the shitty Build-A-Bear employee that I knew what had to be done. As a former Build-A-Bear employee for three years... Say what they put. Bap. That worker was 100... Fine. They put Bab. Whatever. Um, As a Bab employee. That worker was 100% the asshole. I hope you enjoy the gift. Hugs and pisses. Jamie. P.S. Squeeze a bear's bab paw for a surprise. Um, do you think when build bears get old, they start to work at Babbage's? Where's all my Babbage heads at? Josh, I want to laugh at that joke yeah, so hard. because it's Bab and then age. I don't know I, what Babbage is, it's, other than binging with Babish. No, Babbage's was a, was a retail chain store. I don't believe you. Is this like a spinoff of Bergner's where it's like they had like seven names? It was, I, I believe it was under Carson Perry Scott. I believe it was under what that the umbrella. Fuck? But the grand reveal, drum roll, please, editor. editor, 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 editor. <gasps> look at that little guy. Sheesh. Sheesh. Oh, look at the carrot. Sheesh bucket hat and a little carrot. And that, Erica, go ahead and squeeze that right, squeeze left, that right, paw, hand. right paw, right paw, right paw. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Holy, take it home, practice. Take it home, practice. I spend all the good juju by throughout the episode so I can never hit it at the end. <laughs> take it home, practice. This is very cute. Isn't that awesome? And watch this. Oh, almost on Erica's birthday. Yeah, it was a little before. I don't know if it was going to be. You want me to scribble out and put 31? No, this bear has its own birthday. Give me that. What are we naming the bear? Um, piss baby, yeah. No. PBs? Piss b bear -bee? No. Mm. Give me the bear. It can be well, PB. Hang on. And Why we'll do you get the bear? Because we'll it's going to sit right here over my shoulder. Yeah. We'll never know if it's poo bear or piss baby. But he's so soft. You have three things to cut. Two, uh, two things to cuddle already. You don't need a third. 
Look I, at this. Look how cool that looks like in my frame. Does it look? Oh, that does look pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, he's ch big chilling. Cool alert. Coolness alert. Whatever. Fine. Oh, it says bomb. Now you too. can look at him. If he was behind you, you wouldn't be able to look at him. That's true. Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. Jamie, I do have to sue you for copyright infringement around the sheesh. Yeah. The wavy sheesh. Do you think? Do you think Jamie is? You were the other store. The other store that was ripping our bit. You fucker. Uh, no, because Jamie put effort into it. The other store just had sheesh in it. The letters are all fucked up because they're too yeah. lazy to even fix it. Bastards. R.I.P. Sheesh hats. They'll never be back unless we feel like it. Unless, unless we feel like it. It's mostly a. It's a whole hassle. We don't just do hassles on this podcast, though. We also judge assholes on this podcast. And sometimes I do that. And here we go. Maybe. Yes. I know I texted us earlier today to say whose episode it was. Instantly forgot. <laughs> Did you fear it was yours? I panicked for a second there. I was like, fuck. I even told Erica, like, make sure you got your stories ready later. And then I was like, oh, no. Is it my episode? Was I talking about the bonus episode around Patreon.com? So judging black. <laughs> Anyway, um, this is for, um, hmm, does they say, I'm not going to say their name because they don't tell me, give me a name. Jamie. Well, this isn't from the Jamie. Well, there's more than one person named Jamie. Says, Hi, Erica, big fan of the pod. I listen first things Monday mornings. Thought this Ooh. could potentially be interesting for the podcast. Trigger warning, some local Facebook drama involving a creepy, perverted Uber driver. His sister and mom were sent the post, and even the sister commented on it. <clears throat> I've never been to Uber Javert. <sighs> Boo. I think you will specifically enjoy, well, actually be angry Fine, about, boo. the comments from this person. I hope they aren't deleted before you see this. Here's a screenshot of the first few but he has many more arguing with people in the thread. So this person is the Uber driver or the Uber passenger? What? Driver? This or? person is the Uber driver? The comments? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me pull it up here. Um, it says specific town name. Albuquerque. Albuquerque ladies, if you are Ubering <laughs> and get matched with a guy named Chase D, cancel the ride immediately. This guy drove me 10 days ago and then stalked me on Instagram today Whoa! and thought it would be okay to send a super rapey message after ah. me saying roughly five words to him on the drive. Apparently, there's no way to report sexual assault or sexual harassment through Uber.com or through the Uber app. Really? That seems wild. That mm -hmm. does seem insane. And it gets believable, but it yes. shouldn't. that shouldn't exist. Yeah. This it has to be solved by now, right? A company wouldn't allow this to happen. <laughs> uh, but I called and made a report, as well as contacted my attorney, who will be filing for an emergency restraining order against this creep. Whoa! The, the Uber app won't let me see his picture anymore, but I'll attach this picture from Instagram. Make sure to share this and make him famous. That's what. Like, uh, do they share the image, the comments? Mm -hmm. uh, these got to be fucking bad yeah. to immediately go restraining order. So here is the Instagram message that Chase sent to uh, OP. Chase D's? Ch How about Ron <laughs> D's wet? <laughs> Ron you got you got it. D's very close. Run, <laughs> You're almost Run there. D's wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Good job, babe. Editor did it in one. Hey, so I Ubered you to street name McClellan. Washington. So I Ubered you to Washington Street the other Legally, day. Legally, there has to be Washington Street in every town. Really? <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> Just shrug your shoulders like you made. All right. Uh, hey, so I Ubered you to Washington Street the other day. I'm glad there's not many. I, I feel like she made it public, so I feel like I can post her name, right? This, is, this isn't this is our listener stuff. It's just you're reading the name of the person in the Facebook group, right? Yeah. But. Yeah, I think you should. Uh, I mean, didn't we say Julie? Jamie. Jamie? We'll go with Julie. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad there's not many Julies and you were easy to find on here. Anyways, I wanted to be a professional, but I'll happily tell you here. I'd love to see those fucking tits. Whoa! <laughs> also, looks like you like tacos and to have your booty smacked, which we could arrange also. 
I don't think that would even be a good pickup line on a dating app. No. Nope. Like, the tacos thing is so overplayed. <laughs> tacos is so 2017. Whoa. That, that was a, a strong opening. Is that it? Um. The, then we move on to the comments. Okay. What an insane thing. I mean, I I know, like, we don't live in a city where, like, ubering or, or lifting or anything like ride sharing isn't really big here um but uh i i see a lot of tiktoks of, oh, of people like having really bad experiences with it and it's so frightening to know that whoever this random person is just took you to your house yeah or your place of work well that's also i was gonna bring up later on is to do a restraining order you have to give them your address i'm pretty sure on the paperwork and so that's scary mm. Giving this freak your address. One of the people uh, said he deleted his Instagram, so she found his TikTok. He has a TikTok. He's got a uh, he's got a TikTok. Like, does he make content? Let's look. What if he's a follower of the judges? Fuck. Mm. That can't be his TikTok. The account is private and unavailable. Ah. That well, oh, they sense. linked it. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Yeah, I mean that's a that's that's crazy. Yeah. What a, what a wild! I this is. Didn't Uber get in trouble for this or something? I thought so. There was a recent thing that where they had a bunch of people signing up and doing this shit. Yeah. Like, See, that's what I thought. I thought they had a whole controversy and they like made a thing. To where you can like report if you felt unsafe in your ride or something like that. Yeah. The TikTok that I I, ta- I was talking about Christian with this uh, last week, I think, where I saw this entirely scripted fake TikTok bullshit of people doing um, like trauma, like baiting. Or is that the right phrase? Where like it was a, it was fake. It was it wasn't real where this guy would be driving as an Uber driver, quote unquote, and a girl would get into the Uber and he would be like, hey, can you tell me my name? And then she would be like, no, you need to say my name. And it's supposed to be a security measure to make sure that you're getting in the right car. Um, which, you know, if it was the right car, you would just say whatever and you'd yeah. be fine. But this guy gets into like arguments with the same like three women in every single video while they're getting in the car. And it's just like the grossest like trauma farming, like dog shit content. And then you get into an actual situation where the dude is being a creep. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know what's broken in your brain to think that that would be, like, ever cool to say. The fact that he said, too, like, I want to be professional. It's like, so you know you're crossing in, like, yeah. three lines? Yeah. You got any more on it? I was trying to find some of the juicier... Uh... Okay, so somebody sent it to his mom. That's the classic. The mom classic. The mom classic. I saw a post too where it, this was for uh, like uh, kids in school, but whenever they did something embarrassing, like the "oh yeah," the teacher would like make them uh, call their mom and explain what they said in mm. class. And it's like, oh, that's got to suck. That's brutal. <laughs> that is brutal. So his sister commented on it. Uh oh. Said to everyone talking about the girl in his profile picture, "I'm his sister, not his wife." I just saw this post from someone that shared it. My family and I have not been in contact with him for years now. But we have now seen this post, so that there is no need to find us and keep sending it to us. I'm so incredibly sorry for anyone that has this has happened to. This is very scary and disturbing behavior, everyone. Please stay safe and report ha- how and when you are able to. Whoa. Getting, it, it's crazy. I feel it's insane anytime you have a family member. It's like, yeah, we don't talk to that piece of shit. The fact that they're like, she was like that and he's got her in his profile is weird, too. Like they haven't talked for years Good and he point. still has a picture with her. Good okay. point. So then this fucking asshole, I don't know if it's the same guy, says, maybe you should have left a tip. Hmm. You have a retainer on a lawyer, but don't tip. Sounds totally believable. I don't know who's a bigger pile, you or him. Uh, tipping, not tipping is not equatable to threatening of sexual assault. Yeah. Yep. And then dudes, dudes will break their back to defend another dude. Someone else replied to that and said, are you serious? And then this dude's name is Alex. Alex said, if I said it, I meant it. Last time I checked, you tip your driver. If you don't, you're a falsely entitled piece of shit. 
I mean, kind of sh- like a server at a restaurant, you know, or your DoorDash driver. Grow up. You should tip, but uh, d- clearly it didn't bother the driver. <laughs> like, if the driver was so bothered by it, he wouldn't try to solicit why sex from. Why them. didn't he mention the not tipping part <laughs> at all? Where did we get the tip? Hey, notice part? you didn't give me a tip. Maybe I can rearrange where I give you one. So the o- then someone else said, if you think not leaving a tip on an Uber ride means that this woman should be sexually harassed and stalked over Instagram, you're the one that needs to grow up. Yeah. And then he says, okay, you're a liberal for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got her. Got, you can't come back. Checkmate, from- liberal. Goddamn liberals. Then he goes on to say, I'm sure being stalked, S-T-O-C-K-E-D. Okay. Over Instagram caused some serious trauma. I'm so sorry for you. What is this guy's issue? A tip is a tip. He hates liberals and women. He hates liberals and people who don't tip. Mm. AKA liberals. I actually believe this is the only place I believe in consumer activism is I'm stopping tipping now to just really get the change. I want to yeah. be the change I want to see. Yeah. If we all don't tip, then they have to change the way that they do paying. They're not just going to fuck over waiters and waitresses <laughs> and servers. It'll be an immediate change. I do hate... This is one thing that I do not tip on. It fucking drives me insane. Because now, like, any vendor that doesn't even perform fucking a service everything will just flip the fucking I- the iPad over to you and be like, and it's going to ask you a question. And it starts at 20%? Yeah. What happened to the 10%? What about... I might click a 10% on a, like, I'm buying a t-shirt from a vendor. Yeah. At Starbucks now, they give you the tip, and they don't give you percentage. They go like $1, $2, $5, oh. and it's like, my drink was $3. <laughs> Do you want me to give you a $2 tip? Yeah. You're lucky if you're getting a 60 cent tip out of it. And even, even with like corporate ones like that, uh, I've never seen it at a corporate place, but who do you think is getting the tip money? It's not, like, you, yeah. it's not like the server is going to get 100% of the tips because they aren't paid tip wages. Do the baristas make the tips? But like they're going to tax employees because they're not getting paid tip wages. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where if you're getting paid tip wages, you have to get all your tips. Even that is like sketchy isn't it because isn't there like a thing where it's like oh well you have to pay out the back of the house and i gotta take my cut because i own the oh yeah yeah well that's illegal the owner is not supposed to take tips but you can divvy the tips amongst the employees okay yeah yeah somebody else said working in any service industry where you're able to accept tips does not mean you're entitled to one go seek some therapy for that uninvolved anger over a tip it says uh, I know I was going to go full ham, but then I looked at your page. You look like your parents are siblings. That explains a lot about your thinking pro- process. Jesus. Kick rocks. <laughs> Jesus Dunked. Christ. Dunked Don. That's crazy. Ooh. I mean, what's the point of defending this guy? Yeah. Who For sees real? that message and goes like, <laughs> time to roll up the sleeves. It's 10 p.m. on a Friday night. There's dudes out there that they just want to be in a fight. They just want any kind of attention. Yeah. I feel like I was this way at one time as like a, a teenage boy just on the web trolling. Sure. Just, just anonymous. Stirring shit. Insane to do it on a, a profile that has your... Oh, no. I've <laughs> definitely done it on Facebook. I On Facebook back in high school, I used to like find like people having like Facebook arguments. And I would go into the comments and then I would just start like flip-flopping in the comments. I would just start arguing with anybody <laughs> just because I thought it was fun. I in In college, I used to search on Twitter formerly known as Twitter. Um, and I would just like search a random hashtag that somebody used and just get into arguments for no, I would search all fucking scoundrels. I, what I would do is I would search, um, hashtag summer break, uh, around, you know, June time. Yeah. And then people would be like, finally summer break is here. And I, I just, not for like, me. Asshole. It's actually not summer yet. It's not summer until <laughs> So you're actually on spring break. <laughs> uh, it's actually not summer break for another <laughs> and, 21 days. And people would get mad at me and be like, this is a private conversation. I'd be like, you posted it on a public social media forum. Um, actually, <laughs> if you are in a private, why isn't your account private then? And then uh, I remember one person being like, actually, in Britain, summer starts on this day. And I'm like, that's not real, right? And I Googled it. And yeah, Britain just has like, they have like season summer. They have a different vernal equinox. They have the, like summer equinox, but they also just like get to, they just call summer it summer solstice. earlier. Sure. Spring equinox. Sure. Autumnal equinox, winter, winter solstice. solstice. Yeah, what are we doing? So just don't go? fuck it up. I'm finding next the time. next story. <laughs> Start 
weren't sipping. I haven't seen you take a single sip out of the box. I don't take sips. I take gulps. I'm learning from you, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I've never been more proud. How'd you learn to use a box like that? <laughs> I learned it from watching you, Dad. <laughs> this next one is... Doesn't say if I can say his name. Ryan. This one is from Ryan. It says, hello, Rick. This lady is getting lambasted. Good word. And I'm sure she'll delete the post soon, sending screenshots to. Absolutely lambasted. This is from r slash A-I-T-A-H. Okay. Since we have to specify that now. Maybe we should call it like Ada. Just okay. so just f- so it's easier to say. Yeah. Am I the asshole for divorce? I'm an Ada hater. <laughs> it's okay to laugh, Erica. I don't see the need what to the- actually. Am I the asshole? For- Am I the asshole for divorcing my female forty-one husband, male forty-three, to pursue my dreams? So I have been an actress my entire life. I went to a performing arts high school and graduated from a theater program from my college. Her Juilliard. At age 22, I started dating my husband. By age 25, I was a married mom. We have a 16-year-old daughter, 13-year-old son, and an 11-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. My husband started his career as an auditor. Meanwhile, I felt like I was expected by him to be a supporting character in the story of his life. Theater kid. Hey, the, theater the, kid. The theater <laughs> degree is paying off here. I had to conform to his frame of mind and prop up his vision for how life should be. This has included me having to accommodate his long working hours. Me unable to book last minute auditions because his clients would flip if he walked out during meetings to take our kids to the doctor or pick them up from school. What? Why doesn't her husband just help her out with auditions? Isn't he an auditor? Isn't that what an auditor does? No. Boo. Uh, I spent my 20s and early 30s trying to pursue acting, but when I landed a part in a commercial or a small speaking role, I could never take the job because my husband said we could not afford a nanny that would allow me to just go off to Atlanta or to New York for a few weeks at a time on short notice. Eventually, all my $400 headshots were just collecting dust, and people kept saying that they wished they had a six-figure earning husband who was climbing the ladder. How do you have six figures and you can't afford a babysitter? That's what I'm saying. I think, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of the, uh, he's using it as control. Deflection. Also, do we think the quality, what's better? One $400 headshot or $401 headshots? Ooh. Because I feel like you're bound to get a couple really good ones for the if dollar. If you have 400 headshots, there's got to be at least <laughs> yeah. two I, good ones. I would have to agree with that, yeah. <laughs> it, which, at which point you're doubling the amount of headshots okay i am now 41 my oldest daughter is in acting classes and she's good good but everybody from her acting school raves about how i look like margot robbie and driving oh, my no. daughter to auditions and managing her social media made me realize how much i missed acting Amazing. i realized that despite what my husband thinks this was more than just a hobby my husband was transferred from la to san francisco two years ago The kids like San Francisco, but I hate it. The kids are growing up and my husband is a good dad, but I feel like his work in maintaining the household is just cooking meals occasionally. He just adds a lot to the workload. In addition, now he also doesn't want our daughter to pursue acting professionally. Why? Doesn't say. I felt my kids would be proud to see me pursue my dreams and it might encourage my daughter to pursue to be an actress too. My husband and I went to one failed counseling session that didn't address the resentment. I ended up sublet- I ended up subletting a two bedroom apartment on the funds from my credit card and filed for divorce. Okay. My husband refused to let me take the two younger kids with me, but my older daughter insisted on going with me to LA and my husband tearfully relented. I thought I was doing the right thing, but my two younger kids came to visit and are very distant. They refused to live with me full time. I've now been going to auditions and networking and even though it's been only a few months, I feel like I've been set free. But people are asking me to reconsider this divorce. I want to move forward with it, but am upset my kids are upset and that I feel like there is this pressure on me to book a job or it will all be for nothing. But even if I don't book jobs, I'm doing what I love to do and I get to support my daughter to act in the way that I was never supported for. So am I the asshole? 
I mean, no, but like also maybe a little, you seem a little narcissistic. Maybe that's the actor. <laughs> the way she's like, everybody says I look like Margot Robbie. I wonder if that also rings true of like with how famous Margot Robbie is. Yeah. Like that could have been me and Barbie. Well, and it's also like the fact she's like, my two youngest just, they're still mad at me. And it's like, well, they probably can't comprehend yeah. you leaving and breaking up your family to go act. What did they like, say? Where they were like 14, 11? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's natural that they're going to be upset, but you would if you actually are doing it and you're happier, they'll yeah. learn to understand. Yeah. Like, And of course they're going to resent you more. They're living with your with the dad. Yeah. Like, who is upset by this decision. And so. you're the one who left. Like, that's, yeah. that's natural. But it'll get fixed. And you don't have to book a job. You gotta book a bunch of jobs. You gotta book a bunch of jobs. And saying that she, the reveal that they were in LA the whole time too, like I feel like that would make it so much easier. That's what I was thinking too. And she's like, oh, if I had to like rush off to uh, Atlanta or to New York, I'm thinking she's like, okay, in the Midwest, like far away from these places right. that, you know, she can't get anything to work out right. for. But. She's in L.A. Like, most of this shit would be in L.A., right? Well, it depends. How much yeah. filming do they do in New York? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm sh- the thing is, it depends on the acting work, right? I feel like it's Atlanta and Vancouver are the two go-tos. Yeah. But if you're doing, like, commercial work, you could probably do a lot of that in any city you're in for acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you want to do, like, full-time, like, you know, long-term acting jobs, you're going to be shooting on somewhere probably not in L.A. Because it's so expensive yeah. to shoot in L.A. You know what I mean? You'd be shooting in Atlanta or Vancouver. Yeah, probably Atlanta or if you wanted to get out of the U.S., say to the north, maybe Vancouver. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Christopher Nolan and you want to make a Batman movie and then it's in Chicago. Yeah. That just sucks that he was... I mean, this is this harkens back... he had it in Chicago? Yeah. Okay. This harkens back to... uh, um, Hey, I've always said this. Christopher Nolan rips Sam Raimi's bit. Of filming in Chicago. Uh, this harkens back to, was it two two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Uh, with the guy who was upset because his girlfriend wanted to go pursue criminal justice. Mm. We had so many girlies in the comments being like, you should support her no matter what. And maybe just don't talk about her being a cop. And it's like, this is such an, a clear track to just harboring resentment. Yes. And in mm-hmm. a spe- I mean, in that case, the person that was going to be a cop was a woman. But like in this case, she got trapped because of her kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and now that you have kids, it complicates everything so much, especially as the mother, mm-hmm. um, because of court systems, yada yada yada. Uh, but it's fucking insane to look at the situation and feel like any have anybody feel like you're being a dick because your husband pretty much prevented you from doing what you want to do with your life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it feels like he was finding any excuse possible to not let you do this thing. Yeah. Probably jealous or... And well, and I get, like, I mean, you hear everybody that tries to be an actor in LA talk about, like, the struggle you have to go through. So I'm sure, oh, sure. it is, like, expensive. It's it's not just a hobby. Like, it's oh, yeah. a lot of money, a lot, a lot of, of time. time. Especially now she's, uh, was she's at 41? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all know the Hollywood double standards of, yeah. you know, old, quote unquote older actresses. Like, yep. Yeah. You looking like Margot Robbie at 41 is not a good thing. You you need to be looking like Viola Davis. You need to get these Still older roles. very good looking. For exactly. But you got to look like a woman. You can't look like <laughs> a hot Barbie. <laughs> I don't know guys, what point you're trying to make. You guys but, don't hey. get you guys don't get LA double standards. <laughs> right. This is all existing on the double standard yes. for women. Yeah. Right. All right. One and more. we don't agree with that double standard. I don't agree with it, but the execs do. Right. Why do you think I can't get fucking work? Because <laughs> you live in the middle of nowhere. I can't read either. Or remember my lines. <laughs> Can barely make it through an ad read. Um one more before the break. Okay. This is from... Doesn't say if I can Margo. use your name. This is from Margo. Love that show. And then says, this is a terrible guy who likes to post alpha male fan fiction on Twitter. Oh, that. oh what an insane hobby. Like <laughs> Going to Wattpad for Andrew <laughs> Tate, love? Yeah. <laughs> um, this is from twitter obviously or x well this was from seven weeks ago so i think it was still twitter then anyway uh this is user nick adams oh i love nick adams i love nick adams account 
he's a piece of shit. Oh, okay. He's a Hooters enjoyer, though, so okay. I'm kind of on his side. I've been called the Napoleon of paintball. <laughs> Come I, on. I inspire my squad to fight, not just for <sighs> themselves, but for their fellow guys, their families, and their country. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> War is not for limp-wristed beta males like Prince Harry. It's for alpha males what? like Stonewall Jackson. The, come on. More modern reference than that, bud. That's why I've never the lost a battle. That, the person that lost, didn't he lose? <laughs> well, yeah, but his walls were made of stone. Oh, shit. So there's a really big debate on if Nick Adams is uh, in on the bit or not. Okay. Because his tweets are so unhinged. They are so unhinged. I gotta say, talking about paintball this way is pretty insane. I'm not even done. This this thing has this. I got like three pages. I'm ready. I love his. I lo- it's so funny to laugh at. Just the other day, I found myself in the midst of one of the most intense firefights of my life. Paint fight. <laughs> I was taking cover behind a barricade, pinned down, but flanked by a masculine guy on either side of me. We were outgunned and outnumbered, but we had them beaten in the category that mattered most testicular fortitude okay as i tried to peek around the barricade to locate our enemies i felt a big meaty hand grasp my thigh commandant we're surrounded what are we gonna do robbie asked me with a panic in his voice i'd never (laughs) heard before i i just remembered the fanfic part and i was about to say like what is this writing (laughs) oh yeah it's a fucking it's literally fanfic Robbie was one of my paintball mates and an alpha male to his core. He had the heart of a lion and the physique of Captain America. As his fearless demeanor and imposing stature made him the perfect second in command for my squad of alpha males. I leaned in close to calm him down. This is all from Nick Adams? Yes. This is crazy. I leaned in close to calm him down and told him not to worry. As my tactical mind got to work. Oh, that's so fucking People hot. have dubbed me the George Patton of paintball due to my relentless attacking and brilliant strategic mind. General, General Patton. Patton? Okay. I've never heard of him ever called by a full <laughs> name. Never heard George. I quickly devised a plan and huddled with my guys. I laid out our maneuvers and proceeded to give a battlefield okay. speech that could easily be categorized as Churchillian. This is fucking hot. Churchillian. <laughs> Robbie sat up erect and quickly <laughs> unleashed a dozen blasts of cover fire as Spencer and I bolted off to our right for the next barrier. Over the next several minutes, we systematically worked our way towards the enemy lines, leaving a trail of bodies and fresh paint in our wake. We had successfully leveled the playing field. It was three on three, dueling three sums of men. Oh, yeah. Editor, sexy music. Going at it with untamable passion, oh, yeah. but we had them surrounded. Please don't do that to me. That's that's gross. That's this is out. getting us hard. We're men. This is hot to us. speech. This is smut for us. A few well placed sniper shots from Robbie had eliminated our opponent's final two foot sh- soldiers, leaving only their commander remaining. Spencer had a clear shot, but I quickly smacked down his barrel. No, no, he's mine. Oh, I yeah. said as I took a deep breath. Oh, do you think there's an enemies to lovers arc? Cover oh, me. Oh my god. Oh, oh yes. With paintballs screeching past my ears, I let out a masculine war cry and charged my last remaining foe. He was so shocked by my blitzkrieg that he hesitated for a mere second. But that's all I needed. I fired away and plastered his face. <laughs> felling him to his knees. The white paint dripped down his I stood over the man who I had just covered in paint. I was taunting him and reveling in the glory of my victory. I walked away to find my two alpha male comrades already celebrating our victory with a few domestic beers in a parking lot. (laughs) What a fun, fun. They couldn't say Bud Light. Robbie greeted me with a manly embrace and Spencer handed me an ice cold yingling. Okay. All right. That's an American beer. I wrapped my lips around a big vigor... A big victory cigar Ah. and savored the sweet taste of my triumph. I don't just love to win. I hate to lose. When I stepped into the arena that day, I had nothing short of complete domination in my mind. No force on earth was strong enough to stop me. Never get between an alpha male and something he wants. 
That's awesome. I love Nick Adams so much. That had to be made up. Do you see what I mean? Oh, it's made up for sure. But do you see what I mean? He's got to like, be in on Is he bed? in on it? But he is such a piece of shit. Like, he is such a piece of shit. Do we think he's making money? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He, okay, then he's in on the bit. He has... So his Twitter bio is... Uh, Best-selling author endorsed by President Trump, founder of Flag USA, 1776, presidential appointee, Australian by birth, American by choice. It used to say Hooters lover, but his Twitter name literally is Nick Adams parentheses alpha male. Uh, I remember this guy. It's now. funny that you ju- that you brought him up here because I just retweeted an owning of him because Mina Kimes, who's an NFL analyst, one of the best in the business, she's great, uh, just got paid uh, 1.7 million dollars by ESPN to work for. Uh, and talk about the NFL. And he said, Nick Adams said, ESPN just gave a huge new contract to their NFL analyst, in quotes, Mina Kimes. Kimes has never played it down at football in her life, yet she will be paid $1.7 million a year to talk about it on woke ESPN. ESPN is no longer about sports. It's about promoting equity among the genders. Which, why, you're saying that like it's a bad thing. Yeah. But... The n- fact that he knew, like... <laughs> The right words for that makes me feel like it's a bit. Uh, Mina Kimes then quote tweeted it and said, cope harder and attached this video of her punting a ball. I This was very <laughs> funny. I saw the cope harder tweet. Uh, which is so fucking funny. Uh, I'll send it to you, Christian, so you can put it on the screen. But Nick Adams is such a fucking loser. Yeah, he has a... This person sent me another one. Um, and we'll read it after this break. And let's get back with that Nick Adams tweet. When I see a man in a mask, I get pissed off. (laughs) Man, the pinnacle of God's creation, made in his image, muzzled and emasculated. It's infuriating. Masking is a mental illness. I arrived at the airport a bit early for my flight this morning. I was working diligently on my iPad when something in my peripherals caught my eye. I looked up to see a masked couple take the seats directly across from me. Naturally, my eyes were immediately drawn towards the man. I thought what? I thought we were talking about masking as like neurodivergent masking. Nope. No. <laughs> also, iPad beta male behavior. I was gonna say, how can you look masculine by hovering over a an iPad? <laughs> Seeing a ridiculous N95 mask covering his face enraged me. I had to do something. I felt a swell of testosterone as I locked eyes with the man sitting mere feet from me. I was seated as I usually am, legs spread wide apart. In doing so, I immediately established that I was the alpha dog in this interaction. Woof, 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 woof. Editor, alpha dog noises. He kept his gaze fixed on mine for a moment, but quickly began to buckle under the pressure of my stare as he crossed his legs to make room for his effeminate messenger bag. Do you think this is what all alpha males that don't break stairs are thinking? Yes. Because like a uh, friend of the show, Jake, is mm-hmm. a famous will not break stare. Okay. Jake is very like, if I catch eyes with a guy, I will stare at him until he looks away. It's always been like that. Do you think he's thinking this? <laughs> like, I I've locked gaze with a target. I'm not going <laughs> to. I can't imagine. So I got to tell you, I have the reverse. If I see people like being a d- dickhead and I catch eyes with them, I will just like stare them down. Yeah. And then because it's like, if you're like a shithead, it's kind of one of the things I like doing like job interviews for. It's when almost- you come in and they're like a shithead, it's like, I'm just going to be a fucking, I'm going to out macho you now. It, and it's almost your duty as a six foot two guy. Mm-hmm. You, like I, I don't have the command of a room I'm like Doing the do. Lord's work. Yeah. You're doing it on the good side. You're fighting yeah. the good fight. Okay. I love to give, I love, well, I don't do this in interviews, but I do kind of like giving like businessmen like the shit handshake. Where you, okay. you grab them too quick. Yeah. Assert dominance. If I know that they're a shithead, I like doing that to people. What was only mere seconds of direct eye contact felt like hours. During that time, I felt like I truly understood the man I was wearing down with my masculinity. I saw the eyes of a man who had experienced pain. The pain of a man whose masculine aspirations of a foursome with the boys had been crushed by the nasty woman sitting to his left. What's a foursome with the boys? And how's that masculine? Is that a game of golf? (laughs) You're putting something in some holes. Mm Mm-hmm. 
a man who was bullied out of his fantasy football league by his nagging wife right as his team was on the verge of a dynasty. Now I'm on his side. Oh no, he converted you? (laughs) A man who has allowed his masculinity and agency to be eroded like the Grand Canyon. My compassion turned to consternation. And I in- made up word. <laughs> and I intensified my gaze. This man wasn't a victim. He's a coward. He surrendered his testicles. Did I say that right? Surrendered? Yep. He surrendered his testicles in a quest for female validation and betrayed his own kind. Mm. As soon as I made the slightest lean forward, the other man broke. He averted his gaze from mine, looking directly down and sinking further back into his seat. He probably didn't like this weirdo staring at him with a boner. Your mask, son. Take it off, (laughs) I said, leaning even forward, leaning forward even further. It's time you act like a man again. As he reached for his mask, his wife slapped his hand down and said, don't you dare take that mask off, she said in a shrill tone. Oh, God, bullshit. This is so fucking made up. You don't listen to him. You listen to me. That she, was that happened. That was <laughs> <laughs> That's true that happened. That, yeah, okay. <laughs> that was the last straw for me. I stood up and approached the woman as her husband looked up at me like a child watching Superman come to his rescue. Oh my well, it's because he's in a sitting position, you're standing up. I rained hellfire down on this nasty woman, putting her in her place as only a true alpha male could. Trump Trump fan. When I was finished, the only word she could utter was a shaky sorry as she removed her mask. What? By this point, her husband oh, had fuck. already discarded his, and life had returned to his lifeless eyes. He told me his name was Jeffrey, and I offered my outstretched hand with a smile and helped him up. Come with me. We're going to concierge and getting you upgraded to first class, I said as I put my arm around his shoulder. We're having a foursome with the boys. <laughs> you have much to learn. Oh, we left yeah. his wife behind and headed to the Admiral's Club, where I had booked a private room poured two hot black coffees and headed in right behind Jeffrey. Before I closed the door, I affixed a sign that said, privacy, please. New alpha male is being forged today. That's a big sign. A woman lost her subservient husband today, but the world gained an alpha male. God, this is awesome. This is insane. This is all tweets. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe this is tweets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fellas, um, if somehow you got to our podcast and you made it to 40 minutes into this episode and you somehow believe in alpha male mentality, I'm telling you, this dude's a fucking psycho. Yeah. Being a man, you are allowed to have feelings and wear a mask yeah. and mm-hmm. appreciate your wife and have an understanding and camaraderie. You don't have to hate your wife to be an alpha male. Mm-hmm. You also are allowed to be masculine. Yeah. yeah. You just can't be a fucking weirdo. Um, apparently a foursome is with grass because he then tweeted, what time do you like to have your foursomes? I prefer mine in the morning when the grass is still moist and there are no ball marks on the putting greens. It's golf. There is something <sighs> spiritual about having a foursome with masculine guys first thing in the morning. See, this is what I mean. This is on purpose. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, it has to be on purpose. But he is a piece. I cannot say. When I say on purpose, I don't mean it's a satire account. I mean, he is a piece of shit. Who was leaning into him doing this so that way he's like rage baiting. Yeah, he's rage baiting. Yeah. This is the same fucking energy as did you guys see this massive TikTok um where this uh stay at home mom not stay at home mom, I'm sorry, uh homeschool mom uh put up a, a video of her son like gardening and no. said, I asked him what he wanted to accomplish in kindergarten, and he said he wanted to learn how to successfully transplant a variety of native, native plants without them dying, and also get really good at chess. So that's what we're doing. This is homeschooling. It's like, th- he didn't say that. Shut the fuck up. Stop making shit up for yeah. clout. It drives me insane. Uh, this this post... Well, yeah. I'm, Josh, I don't want to like alarm you, but Olsen did just say last night, he's like, Dad, can you teach me how to sword fight? <laughs> Okay. That was his first word. His first words oh. was a string of sentences. Was a sentence. Yeah. He actually did, though, in all seriousness, he took his first steps yesterday. Oh, you guys didn't tell me? I forgot until I forgot. he talked some shit. So. It didn't seem like that big of a thing, you know? No, I don't know. No, that's, no it was a big deal. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't get a text <laughs> message or a video. Or uh, a... Well, I also had a volleyball game last night, so we were busy. Did you see it? Yeah. yeah. 
He walked as soon as like so. Heather, he walked, I was getting he ready for the over game. And spiked it in some girl's face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was getting ready for the game, like doing my hair and makeup or whatever. And Heather and Olson were in our like closet area, and Christian had just walked in, and Olson had like walked towards him. That's awesome. Yeah, I was getting ready to take a shit. Hey, yeah, I was like, come back, come back, come back. I'll say it. That little fucker loves his dad. Yeah. He does. I'm a cool ass dude. You are. Is that what dad stands for? Cool ass dude. Yeah. Dual dude. ass dude. <laughs> Is that it, Erica? Um, he also tweeted, what do Taylor Swift and her fans, in parentheses, Swifties, have in common? Love for concerts. White women. They both crave masculine, unapologetic, and wildly successful alpha males like Nick Adams. Wait, he said his own name in third person? Yeah. He also retweeted it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty sick. It's a, that's a bold move, but it worked out. How many likes on that bad boy? 200. Yeah, it's pretty wow. good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, results. Uh, was also viewed 29.1 thousand times. I assume he got ratioed the fuck out of by the, the Swift. You can't come after the, the Swifty army. How many how many quote tweets do you think from people with like Rebecca parentheses Taylor's version were just dunking on this guy? Oh, it's got to be a lot. Um, I'm so glad you did that. I love Nick Adams tweets. They're very funny. But you know what I can't wait for? Oh, we're still doing this? That's for Christian to tell me about that circle jerge. What do you I'm, mean? We're I'm going to tell this? you about the circle jerge real fast. We're 50 minutes in. I have a hot take. Oh, okay. fuck. Don't say it. No, come on. I already know what you're about to say, and I don't know no, why. We're fucked. I don't know why you feel the need to voice this opinion, but go ahead. Taylor Swift is overrated. That's insane. Editor, mute her, that. Her music's not that great. <sighs> I, I told Erica she just doesn't get it because I didn't break her heart. That's hey. She didn't have her heart <laughs> <Okay>. broken. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> However, like her most popular songs, the catchy ones that are on the radio over and over, I yeah. get it. Like, sure, they're catchy. Yeah. They're fine. But then, like, when we were in Tampa and she was also in Tampa the same weekend as us. Mm-hmm. Coincidence? Maybe I had to go run out into that night where I disappeared. I've never for seen seven hours. you and Taylor in the same room. <laughs> Is this a Hannah Montana situation? It's not. <laughs> anyway, uh, every single cab and Uber that we were in, yeah, constantly Had. playing every Taylor Swift song, yeah, and they're all ass. Ooh. They're so bad. Um, I mean, I'm gonna disagree. <sighs> on as the as the pop music enjoyer on That's the couch, true. Uh, I think she makes really. She's the thing is about Taylor is she is always ahead of the pop music industry does that make sense no she's setting the trend and that is at least like when it comes to like her music like you're never gonna hear a taylor swift song that sounds like something else unless it sounds like other taylor swift songs you know what i mean compared to like now you hear like a dua lipa song and you're like oh that just sounds exactly like uh you know this song by this artist or like now you hear you know like everybody is copying somebody and i feel like taylor swift sort of forefronts that okay that doesn't change my opinion. I agree with you on this point, but I... Me? I'll never say. You agree <laughs> with me that Taylor Swift's overrated and it's dumb how she's fifth. put on a pedestal like this? Plead the fifth. Um, I just feel like you guys uh, have bad takes. That's fair. Me? You want to hear my Taylor Swift hot take? Yeah. I think it's fucking insane the amount of leeway that her fans give her. <laughs> like... Uh, the fact that she didn't say anything about anything politics related until like 2020 when she was like, we know what we got to do. And it's like, what is that? What is that? You have such a massive platform. Like if you were supposedly allegedly a liberal this whole time, you should have said something. And then all the Swifties will come in and be like, no, her band manager or whatever said that she can't do it. It's like, fuck Scooter that. Scooter Braun said no. It's is like, it's who? so crazy how much defense she gets for like doing shitty things. Mm hmm. Don't even get me started on the private jets. No, I agree oh with you. God. But I think she's fine overall. It's like the same thing with like when it comes to. I'm just saying the kitten hate finally started dying down, and now you're bringing out <laughs> the fucking Taylor Swift. <laughs> you guys are fucking us. It's so funny, Christian. Do we really want to still do the circle? How long of it? You do 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 you do, do long circle? I jerges. do long circle jerges. Hey babe, we can make. This I can as do long a short one. one. This I can, can do... be the circle jerge. Hey, I have a short one. Christian, give us a hot take about Taylor Swift. Um, I try to listen to her newest album. It's garbage. Just okay. It's not good. I didn't love, I haven't loved anything past folklore. 
I haven't listened to a full one yet because they all suck. I've tried to make myself listen to more pop music recently, and... No, they, pop music now is, is really bad. The only time I like pop music is when it's like n- not so subtle, like fuck me music. Um, like uh, Trampoline by uh, uh, Polachek. Uh, what's her first name? Christine? Caroline. Caroline, yeah. Eat that song? Fucking bop. Um, I mean, Olivia Rodrigo makes good music. She does mm-hmm. have some good. She just Billie Eilish, album, right? when she puts out her pop hits, those are good. I like. Hey, hipster here. You I was like Billie Eilish yeah. before she was big. I knew Billie Eilish when she was when she was sixteen. And when she was sixteen, I said that's a little weird. This girl Bob. has talent. That's a little weird. I'll I'll be I'll be over here saying that's a little weird. Hey, don't have her go on <laughs> Colors, the YouTube channel. If you don't want to <laughs> have Christian spot talent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Sure, uh, I think pop music now is really bad, be- and it's in people in the music industry. Like, it's because of TikTok. Yes, T- songwriting this has is... changed because now you have to. They literally write in contracts about like writing songs specifically yeah. to get clips for TikTok to make your music blow up. Yeah, you like a lot of bands have it written in their contracts where you have to make TikToks. What band? It's crazy. I didn't yeah. Know that. What band was I listening to? Hot Mulligan. Um, listen, to their new album. They're really good. Their Midwest emo band, but. They had it in their contract where, like, their uh, like label is like, you guys have to make TikToks. And so they got pissed off about it and they'd like barge into their manager's room, and, like, hey, you're making a TikTok with us today. And like, they would just have their phone on the manager and just like, ah, uh. it's like, oh, great TikTok. We'll post that right now. It's like, <laughs> probably got good views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Music pop. Like, I think the big, the best part of pop music was like 20. 20- 11 to like 2016 i think it was a really the solid 20, era. Oh, the whole 2010s is it was really good and then tiktok really ruined it it really the fact that like most pop songs now are written to have like oh i guess so bad just like just the chorus like you want just yeah this little bit of a song that can be good and then like i can't tell you how many songs i hear on tiktok i'm like oh that fucking rocks and then i look it up and it's like the full song is dog shit a lot mm-hmm. of songs they're writing that 30 out, seconds is really good the rest of the song is dog shit you should watch a like there's a really good video essay i watched about like how the bridge of songs is dying yes songs don't have bridges anymore yes and songs like a sub two minute song is like common now yeah it's crazy i don't know what a bridge is to be honest bridge is uh where all the parts of taylor swift where she talks it's, it's like connects either two verses or a chorus, but it's not like a repeating thing. Really. The standard songwriting is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. So the bridge is where the so- it's where the tempo changes normally, and, so- and something changes about the song to make it interesting. Um, so, uh, what's the what's the Carly Rae Jepsen song that was huge on TikTok? Um, she had a huge song on TikTok, and the bridge was actually one of my popular. And so the rest, the rest of the song didn't sound like that. Yeah, and people were upset. I, I can't think of a bridge of, of a song that is like really iconic. Normally, that's where a guitar solo would go in like an '80s rock band. Okay, because you would hit chorus and then bridge, or the bridge was the solo, and then sometimes you would have a bridge of vocals after that back into the chorus. Yeah. Okay. That's music theory, and that's music theory, and that was this week's circle church sure i'm sorry that i hijacked your circle church hey, that's hey i got every green ideas going got a problem with that josh no is there a specific listener sound you want whatever one you picked i didn't pink one i was pink i didn't pick one i was just gonna do the one that was do we got the, do we got the, it should be somewhere call. What are you looking for? My dongle. Well, I'm looking for your dongle, actually. Um, Is it on your table? What song are you playing? I just searched sound in the Gmail. Perfect. Tell me the name. This one's from Quinn. You fucking pieces of shit. That was in Josh to read, you fucking piece. I'll move it. I'll move it to... I, I just... I was. That's fine. You can play it, but it wasn't Josh to read. All right. Let it be known, Quinn, that I picked out your sound. Am I losing my brain here? I'm on the judges. Mm-hmm. 
You said it's in Josh Sharif. Well, I moved it to listener sounds played now. <laughs> Just search Quinn. I did. That's what I'm telling you. Is that's why I said am I losing my mind because I looked up just Quinn, and it gave me our Quince ads. Did you just so spell just search Quinn sound? It was the two top ones. <laughs> Thank you. Did that? F- hey, did that fix it? Oh shoot! No, it didn't. Crazy. How about the last name? I'm just going to fucking. Listener sounds played. Erica? Yes? Do you have to read it first? This one's from from Quinn. Feel free to use my name. Quinn. Smiley face emoji. Uh, are you, are g- you g- gay or does his dick stink? Did I say homosexual? I'm a hundred percent gay. Not everybody's dick smells bad. Huh? Right? Right. Is this a bad? Right. He's got a stinky penis. <laughs> Please don't lean any closer. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn, that was perfect. That was great. That was, I believe, because you said I can't wait until someone rips that. And ah. there's an audio, so yeah, thank you, Quinn. It. That was fun. What a fun little techno jam. It I was. Like it. It was given 8-bit video game. I'd say 16-bit, but hey, it's neither here nor there. Wrong. Wrong. I'd go out on a limb and say 32-bit. Wow. wow. Did they have 32-bit You guys just chopped my bits. I think they skipped right (laughs) over 32-bit, didn't they? Uh, I believe so. I went to 16 to 64. Would I be the asshole if I ghosted my friend of seven years? Probably. Yes. I was just doing the calculations. Sorry. Hey, Ricky. Hi. I thought you'd enjoy this pickle I found myself in. I Erica does love pickles. She does love pickles. Metaphorical and literal. And unless I'm the one in the metaphorical pickle. Oh, come on. You love solving a little puzzle. No, I don't actually. Escape I'm notoriously bad. I've never done one. But you want to? Yeah. And you want to be in a pickle. You know what? That's he, fair. he rests his case. Anyway, I, 21 female, have been feeling really aloof towards my friend, 22 female. Long story, but we met through one of my best friends, and I wouldn't say we hit it off immediately, okay. but we were always nice to each other. I don't know when we got close, because if I'm, if I'm being completely honest, it happened, I guess, but she definitely feels closer to me than I do to her. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. This girl has made me feel very uncomfortable by making sexual jokes about me to her husband and in front of other people, including her family. Right, row. It, have I read this before? Nope. Okay. Mm-mm. It makes me feel even more uncomfortable because I'm bisexual and apparently she's straight. But when I confronted her about it, she says it's because her, she used to joke that way with her friends in basic training for the Air Force. Oh, well, hey, ding, ding, ding. We figured it out. A couple of service people playing a little grab ass. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I let it slide sort of because I didn't know what else to do. These comments have not stopped, including in front of my own boyfriend at her wedding. Which well, it's made her me, day. Which made me feel <laughs> sick to my stomach. You the, get to do it on your birthday and your wedding. I think the egregiousness level of the comments really depends here. Because if it's like, if it's like, oh, wow, your ass looks good today versus like, I want to eat that pussy up. Like out of nowhere. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> That's a little uncomfortable. You don't get to say that even on your like, wedding. If you walked in, Erica, today and I said, I would love to eat your pussy today. <laughs> it's just me and the boys. It's how we talk. It's a compliment. Take it. Yeah. yeah. Versus is if I said, nice classes. Thank They're you, new. Joshua. They yeah. are new. How are we an hour into this episode and you're just now saying Because you came out and made a point about it on Tuesday. I know. I know. And then Tuesday night at volleyball practice, I fucking... Oh, my God. It was so embarrassing. I we were doing a drill and I down ball into a yoga ball to cup, make it sound like cup. anyway, the ball came right directly back into my my eyeballs and it knocked my brand new glasses off my face and the lens popped out. Wow! So now I have like a chip in my lens. Good thing karma. You're a, good thing you're a karma week. for what? You know what? You'll find out. Okay. You know how you handled the situation on Tuesday is <laughs> karma. Okay. Anyway. 
uh, made me feel sick to my stomach. Here's a problem. I can't seem to get rid of this girl. Whenever I post on my story or socials or anything, she always immediately texts me. Texts will turn into phone calls if I don't answer. Phone calls will turn into FaceTimes. If I, I feel like I'm being stalked by this girl. I've soft blocked her on socials, but it doesn't seem to help. I just want to full on block her, but we have mutual friends and I really don't like confrontation. I know you guys are big advocates for communication, but since I've already tried, I don't know what else to do besides ghosting. I was going to say, oh. I guess we're a bigger advocate for ghosting. <laughs> no. By the way, if you want more stories about this girl, I've got plenty, including her first and second bachelorette parties, bridal shower, wedding, and whole marriage, if I'm being honest. Love you, the boys, and the pod. The bachelorette party's got to be a crazy story. Uh, yeah, I mean, send in all of the stories, obviously. Here's what you do. You start... Fake your death. Casu okay, no, we're on different pages, don't worry. <laughs> you start casually dissing aspects about her life. And so like, every time you hang out, you're getting into an argument. Okay. And then eventually she won't want to hang out with you anymore. Just start talking shit about the Air Force. She's going to go ballistic about Where's that. Branch, if I can say... If, if this is a safe and open place, where's <laughs> Branch? What's okay, the worst branch? branch? Oh, I was saying it's not a safe and open place. Oh, I thought you had a really strong stance that the Air Force was actually the, one of the good ones. I don't have an opinion on that, actually. I would just start like pissing her off every time you hung out. That way you're kind of like, you're kind of like uh, uh, Pavlovian. Like, okay. Every time she comes over, she has a bad time. Mm. And that way she just like stops sending that text message. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or you could just like. The the having mutual friends part is going to make it Rough. even more difficult, but I ghosted a friend once. Yeah. I've talked about it, haven't I? I don't know. On the yeah. pod, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we have. Yeah. I, you just slowly stop reaching out. I think that's pretty normal. I, I think a friend breakup is more rare than not. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty rare okay, like, to just break up to, with a friend. Like to send a text to just message fall away versus or like, tell up. someone be like, I don't want to be around you anymore. Yeah. yeah. Get your shit. Here's a box. Yeah. Like that's pretty rare. So I don't think it's expected of you. Yeah. But if you're getting like increasingly uncomfortable and this person is yeah. not getting the hint, then you do what you gotta do. Maybe tell the rest of your friends, like, I feel uncomfortable around her. So yeah, see if anybody else is getting the same vibes. Does anybody else hate F-16s? <laughs> and the people that fly them? <laughs> I mean, I hate F-16s. I don't even get started on the pilots. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ugh, barf. So, yeah. I don't know how to help good, you. Good luck with that. Sorry. Fake your death. What was her name? We can't talk about it. <laughs> Bruno. <laughs> Bruno, I am very sorry. Female. 21. Bruna. Bruna. Brunhilda. Bruno's last name. Bruno Bruno? Bruno Bruno. All right, you want another story? Yeah. Okay, don't yell at me. Don't yell at my wife, dude. Yeah, that's right. Take a sip. I'm gulping. I haven't heard one gulp. You look away whenever I drink. Well, I don't want to make you shy. <laughs> I know you're. I know you're drink shy. Potentially a new subreddit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. It's originally posted on r slash relationships. Whoop whoop. That's not a new. Fuck. I don't know anything about that podcast, but I still think it's safer to not. Sure. Yeah. So this is from r slash relationships. We all heard it. One time for the editor. Um, the title of the post is... One time for the editor. What? Give me an r slash relationships. <laughs> a this clean is, one. This is from r slash relationships. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I, 25 male, am majorly losing attraction to my girlfriend, 22 female, since she finished college and started working. Did we already read this? It doesn't sound familiar to me. Okay. I think I I read these and then when I go back to read them again, I'm like, wait, I already read this. Yeah. I, 25 male, am majorly losing attraction to my girlfriend. I already read that. I met her almost four years ago. 21 and 17? 
Is that correct? At the beginning of her first year of college. Okay, I'm 18 probably. She was your typical cute little college girl wearing yoga pants and all sorts of cute outfits uh, and loved to party. Okay. I had always had a fantasy of being with a cute college girl. Okay. But never had a chance to until I moved near a college campus and started matching with them on Tinder. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. A couple months after I met her, she even took what I call my sober virginity. What the fuck? Where I made love to a sober girl Whoa. for the first time. Holy shit. We moved in together after a year. Now she has recently become a college graduate and started a new job last week. A few things have been bothering me. I hate the new clothes that she wears to work. They remind me of my dad going off to his own office job. What? Is she wearing button-ups and ties? What the fuck? When she was going off to school or to work as a waitress, she always looked adorable. But now she looks like some dorky old man every weekday morning. Arguably, a waitress outfit is closer to <laughs> business casual. She also talks about work a lot, and it feels so strange. Oh, my God. Does this guy not have a job? What's going on here? I'm beginning to dread asking her to tell me about her day, which I've always done, because she starts talking so much detail about her job, and it's so boring. Her stories from waitressing and school were way more entertaining. She also keeps talking about all the crazy things she wants to buy. Namely, a nice new car and a nice new house in the suburbs. Insane. Crazy. Asinine. I told her there's no way I can afford to buy a house. And she said, we will be able to once I've paid off my student loans and saved up for a down payment. What, what world is she living in? She, yeah, right. <laughs> she well, she's about, going into a place where she has to dress like a man going to work. Okay. So she's probably making at least the full dollar compared she, to the 72 cents. She's an auditor. Audit her. Boo. She talks about savings and finances. I'm so sorry. She talked about wanting to have a garden and all of this other stuff, which just made her seem so old. That's such a... Dude, come on. You're fucking 25. She talks about savings and finances, which she never did when she was going to college with loans and money from waitressing. I just feel like I'm starting to miss my little fresh-faced college girl. Now she's starting to play grown up more and more, and it just rubs me the what wrong is way. This, You're a man. fucking what freak. Is this? I honestly can't help but feel that college girl to office lady is not a glow up. Should I try to make things work and find a way to fall back in love with her? Some part of me is wondering why. I'm sorry. Some part of me is wondering if I, if it can possibly work out long term. TLDR, I found her much cuter as a college girl than an office lady. You're a fucking freak. Yeah, I guess technically you're not a pedophile, but whatever the step up from that is. Uh, all of our libertarians let us know. This is, you're literally just want, you want their, what you're missing is a power dynamic in your relationship. You're afraid that she's gaining power and autonomy. You liked when she was just doing silly little college things, but now she's getting a job like your dad. And going to be able to buy things with her money. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. freaking you out. And she's like, you're 25. Mm -hmm. You're like, you shouldn't be like now still looking for someone who is like trying to get their life together. Yeah. Or like not, uh, not to put it, but like who is in college and like, that's fucking insane. God. So one of the comments what a says, fucking weirdo. you're a weirdo, dude. I yeah. hope you hear this podcast and I hope you hear that you're a fucking weirdo. He listens weirdo. to the other one. He said, uh, this comment says, you just want to date a kid. If she has any brains, she will quickly realize she's outgrown you. OP's response. I'm sensing prejudice against blue collar workers. What the hell does that mean? You can't just be like, I'm blue collar. So you can't criticize. I'm blue collar. Of course I want an 18 year old. I'm but. neurodivergent and a minor. Actually, you can't, <laughs> you can't criticize me. Yeah. Isn't that disgusting? That is uh, the this is and I'm gonna have to say this is probably fake, but I hope it's fucking fake to to write those words and say I moved to a college town that way I could match with college kids and be not ashamed of it. I know he didn't say those words specifically, but I read the lines is fucking insane. Also, the fact that having sober sex was yeah. like a milestone is. No 
fucking insane. Not even sober sex. Sex where she is sober. Yeah. When I heard sober virginity, I thought first time you, like when I was sober, I had yeah. sex. To literally specify that the first time you had sex with a woman while they were sober is why are you even thinking about that? Yes, that's what I mean. It's like you are a weirdo. Like you have these things in your brain that you're a weirdo. God. Mm-hmm. Makes sense that she was the first person to, uh, where am I going with this? Uh, all the other girls had to get drunk and lose their sense of judgment to have sex with them before. Does this make sense? Mm. And now she's being groomed. Does this make, is anything here? He's is my point guy. being made? He's a yeah. bad person? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Fucking creep. Yeah. Do you want another one? No. That one left a bad taste in my mouth. I don't yeah. want another The only thing that could wash that away is... Scratch that. I do want more. Over on the bonus episode. Ah, you got day. me. Not until the bonus episode, Chrissy gets the oh, bag. Oh, Chrissy gets the bag on the bonus episode. Over at Judgy's Pod. Bo- uh, Patreon.com slash Judgy's Pod, where we are doing the very famous email game. That's right, folks. I'm going to have oh, them guess words and all listener submitted song uh, stories over at Judgy's Pod. I'm so excited. Patreon. But where else can they find us, Richard? You can find us on the internet at Judgy's Pod. And you can do that at gmail.com if you want to send us some stuff, uh, like via email. Uh, <laughs> or you can find us on TikTok, Twitter, aka X. Twitch, YouTube, um, th- Threads, Blue Skies, th- uh, Letterbox. I There's so many. I thought it was pronounced Blue Skies. Whatever. There's a lot. Just Google it. You'll figure it out. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Hey. Judges love you guys. Very cute. Two in a row. Kisses and kisses. Have a great week. It's, it feels long tonight. It does. It feel, felt very long tonight. Okay, bye. Bye.